Today's episode of The Photographic Eye is proudly brought to you by Pick Drop. How's it, how's it? I am like super excited because in the end of May, I am gonna fly over to San Francisco to go and check out the work of Irvin Penn. I've arranged to have a little special tour, you know, where we're gonna look at it and be sort of given some insights into to the work of this, this fantastic photographer and then go off and get a chance to talk amongst them <laughs> with, our, with our little community of photographers. And, and so I'm really excited about that. But, but why Irvin Penn? Right? Why is his name seem to surface so much in photography over and above people like, say, Ansel Adams or, or Richard Avedon. What is it that sets him apart? At this point, you might be going, well, I've never heard of Evan Penn. <laughs> Who is he? What do you want to know? Right? He is, or was rather, I always seem to do that, don't I? Like, he is. Yeah, maybe because in my mind, they still exist because we have their photographs. Isn't that a nice, nice way of sort of thinking about it? But he's the guy oh, <laughs> on the cover of this very heavy book called Evan Penn Centennial. This is from a couple of years ago. His photography for Vogue magazine and all the fashion sort of stuff, these are the still lives, his cigarette butts, all of these photographs have something in common. They are pure enjoyment of photography. You know, that sounds like a weird thing to say, but if I'm thinking about Ansel Adams or I'm thinking about Avedon, right, or anybody else who's kind of known for one or maybe two things, I get the feeling, and this is no slight on their work or, or their approach, that they enjoyed a specific type of photography, right? That very much they were drawn towards one thing and, and that was their focus. Whereas with Penn, while there's a lot of portrait photography, and that's kind of, that's where I was first introduced to his photography, is his portrait work. When you start digging into his background, you know, his, his career, there seems to be a wide range of photographs from shadows on, on the floor in the early days, he's walking around the city doing, doing things with a camera that quite frankly, you know, a lot of us would be able to do today. Right. And again, this is not to say like probably people might sit there and misconstrue that and say, well, you're saying that we're just as good as urban pen, etc. No, that's not that's not what I'm getting at here. What I'm getting at is that Irvin Penn's early work, probably much like a lot of great photographers' early work, is something that feels accessible. Like you can look at it and go, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. I can recognize that I could possibly be able to do something similar. So we look at his work and, and some, and there's this sort of segues into his, his, his still life photography. You start thinking, okay, well, this is a bit more, this is a bit trickier right? Because it requires a studio and setting up lights and all sorts of things like that. It requires some mentoring by, you know, somebody great like Alexei Bogdanovich, who, who was kind of instrumental in a lot of huge photographers. Like he, he you know, he mentored Penn and Avedon and, and many others. And then you look at his still lives and you go, oh, look, there's like, there's a fly and there's some weird stuff in there. It feels very much like he's playing with the ideas of, of introducing elements into a still life that you might see in sort of Renaissance paintings. The other things, these days we, we're kind of obsessed with, in photography, I, th I think perfection, uh, everything must be clean, everything must be just so. And when I look at Irvin Penn's, certainly his still lives, every time I go back to them, I see something new in there. So that's a complete departure from what he was doing out in the street. And then, of course, you know, he segues into doing portrait photography. And my, you know, my favorite body of, of Penn's work are, the, are these corner portraits where he contrived to make this set in the studio where the, the sitter would be placed. And then said, look, do your own thing, right? You can play, play around as a way of thinking about the interaction between the photographer and the sitter. I, th I think in Penn's discussions about this, he, he talked about how this is a bit like a baseball field where the photographer is the pitcher throwing out things and the sitter is, is the batter, kind of reacting, doing their own things. And what I love about this is, especially when you contrast this with today's modern celebrity photography, that the difference feels that I'm seeing some personality 
in Irvin Penn's portraits of, of these people. And not just the corner stuff, also the images he did with this this uh, this piece of carpet, which apparently I think he found in a in a studio in Paris and, and was just like, this is my piece of carpet. And he like kept it like forever. You know, <laughs> I don't maybe maybe I have a background here, which is I made it you know, 15 years ago and I just I love it. It's, it's my so I would never get rid of it. Maybe you have something similar. So, so those kind of ideas, you know, so then we got you know, street stuff, we got you know, still life, and then you have portrait photography. All things that are, he's done exceptionally well, but they're completely different genres. And then you kind of segue, you know, sort of cycles through to these things with the cigarette butts and the detritus that he finds on the street, you know, old gloves and things of that nature. And, and I will have to say at this point that I don't get these. I, you know, it, it's, it feels kind of, maybe I shouldn't say these kind of things, like I don't get it, but I don't, I don't get these. I think it's okay to enjoy somebody's photography and not like all of it. You're not, I don't, you're not required to enjoy everything. I love Frank Zappa, but some of it I just find is like, it's too much. But that's the thing with photography. That I look at pen stuff, I don't think about it, but other people do. So, you know, so it feels like when I look at Urban Penn's work and I compare his photography to other big names, that that's what separates them apart. This, this enjoyment of everything, of trying out all sorts of things. And in a modern day equivalent would be a photographer like, like Dan Winters. I did a video on him where I talked about, you know, hey, he's a kind of, a, for me, a, a modern day equivalent of Urban Penn in so much as he seems to take photographs of all sorts of stuff. Then somebody got a little bit annoyed because you got, oh, you can't compare Winters with the master pen and stuff like that. Of course you can. That you can have similarities and things. You know, we need to get off this, this idea that certain people are like, you can't ever compare against them. If you see their fingerprints in other people's work, then that's cool because other people are like, you know, saying, oh, you know, I, I recognize that great. And I'm using it to inform my own images. The lesson that I sort of take away from pens photography and, 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 and again my, uh, my interpretation of his approach to photography is that he wasn't sort of shoehorning himself into one particular thing or other. It was just I'm just going to photograph whatever I feel like it. There's a tendency I think certainly amongst a, a huge number of photographers to think of ourselves as a particular type of photographer. Even though I, I try not to, if you, if you held a gun to my head and you said, what are you, I'd be like, I'm a portrait photographer. Despite the fact that I don't really, <laughs> I was forced into, I was an accidental portrait photographer. Yeah, you know, there's this idea that we need to label ourselves. And that's why I think when I think about pen, I don't think fashion photographer, I don't think portrait photographer, I don't think landscape photographer or still life photographer. I just think photographer. And so Adam's landscape, Richard Averton is a portrait slash fashion photographer. Look at his work. Get the excitement that Penn had for his, his subject, where he turned his camera to. That's why I'm so excited to go and see his prints. I've never seen any Irvin print, any Irvin print, any Irvin Penn prints. I say that six times in a row, right? In the flesh. I want to feel like I'm close to him, close to the artist, the person who created these images. If you'd like to join me, there's a couple of spots still left on the Saturday talk. I'm, I'm, it's so good, I'm going twice, right? The Friday and the Saturday. And uh, there'll be a link in the description box below about this. I would love to see you there. And if you're in DC, I'm also gonna check out the George Harrell exhibition at the NPG in, uh, in Washington um, that uh, the following week. So yeah, so there we go. Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed this, this look at Irvin Penn. If you'd like to find out more about Dan Winters, who I compared to Penn, check out this really long, interesting video that I did where I interviewed the man himself, Penn. <laughs> I wish Penn, I wish Winters over here. Thanks ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.